Welcome to Sertigen Bosch and the 2019 World Archery Para Championships. This beautiful city has hosted a week of top class archery, culminating in today's medal matches on recurve Sunday. The conditions, well, they're pretty good today. 11 world records set already this week, and things are looking favorable for some high scores. Coming up in this session, we focus on the team events, bronze and gold medal matches in the women's open team, men's open team, and mixed team. in the top four. today shooting from wheelchairs or stools well we focus on a recap and we focus on a team events today Coming up now, it's the recurve women's open bronze medal match between Russia and Italy. This beautiful Gothic cathedral is the backdrop, and uh, we look at how the teams got to this stage. Russia shot a 16.75 to be ranked fourth. Italy a 16.95 to be ranked third. Russia lost to China in the semi-finals. Italy lost to Turkey. Well, without further ado, let's go down to the range and welcome Russia and Italy onto the field of play here in the Netherlands. Team bronze medal match. Well, here come the Russian team. 
Svetlana, Baron Saver, Margareta Sidorenko, and Buryat Mirza Alieva. Svetlana Varancieva, Buryat Mirzalieva, Margarita Sidorenko. And here are their competitors on target number two. Russia will face the Italian team of Elisabetta Mino, Veronica Floreno, and Annalisa Rosada. This is the same team that won bronze at these World Championships two years ago in Beijing. Elisabetta Mino. Well, Chris, we see the teams setting up um, and the astute amongst our audience would have noticed uh, that there's uh, an interesting setup and they, they take their time putting uh, the chairs together. Yeah, so in able-bodied competition, archers and team batches have to rotate on and off the line. Uh, but in wheelchair and para-archery competition, they all stay on the line at the same time and you'll see them raise their hand after shooting each shot, which is the equivalent of stepping off the line in, in able-bodied competition. And uh, for those of us that are new to archery, how does the team competition work? We're in a team competition. We're using a set system with the recurve bow. It's six arrows per set. The winner of each set receives two set points. If it's a tied set, it's one point per team. The first to five set points wins the match. Well, here we go. It's time for the women's open team event. And Italy will get us underway. Floreno leading out the line. This is Annalisa Rosada, the world number 10. are just dropping a, a little lower than the other two so we switch over to Russia for their first three arrows we saw archers going low on the target face yesterday for, for the 50 meter events for the compound and w1 divisions similar story so far today with the recurves Spread for the Russian arrows, and they try for at the halfway stage. Well, we saw the world number five, Floreno, just adjusting her sight after her first shot. She does so again. Well, a 45 out of 60 set, and there's a constant adjustments to the site for all of the Italians here. So unlike uh, 
the majority of the international events, there is no practice range at 70 meters next to this finals arena. They do have eight meters to warm up, well, warm up their techniques before entering the arena. And they had a familiarization session on, on Friday where they had an opportunity to shoot in this arena. But there's no practice session directly before they enter. Looks like the Russians have dialed into the centre here. There's a big opportunity to take the points in this first set now for Svetlana Baransova. Nine. Definitely looks like the Russians have dialed in there, Chris. Well, they had that low arrow, and we all saw them moving their sights fr from the start, and it's very important to, to learn from each arrow. Um, the, the teammates communicate. They, they, they say whether it's a good shot, whether the arrow was a, a true representation of where the shots are landing, and they all adjust from, from each other's uh, learnings. Yeah, communication, the key. Interestingly, the, the Russians are set up with uh, two right-handers and one left-hander. How does that communication work when you are talking to someone opposite-handed to you? It's a very team-by-team team thing in any team sport. You've got to work with your teammates, work on communication, work on, on, on what works between each other. Some archers might like to be told one thing and, and some might want to be told something completely different. And It's a very personal thing that each team has to work out. Well, the first two set points it do go to Russia. And uh, our target score here, Chris, what are the teams looking for to take the medal? Within a set, a good score at this level. We're talking 55, 56 points, but the sets that are already gone, they don't matter anymore. It's all about the next set. It's about winning the next set. And, and actually, to win a set, all you need is one more point than your opponent. Well, the trailing team, Italy, will shoot first in the second set. They were the bronze medalists two years ago at these World Championships that were held in Beijing. You would have just seen that the bottom of the limb tip hit the, the guard around the wheelchair, uh, the, the wheel of the wheelchair after she let go. All of the archers are guarding the spokes of their wheelchair in some way. Um, just, just to protect the bow and the chair from that contact. pattern that, that we can pick out there there still aren't any ar arrows high of the 10 line and, and when you've got all your arrows in one quadrant of the target face you need to move your side Six. and we said that the italian team were the bronze medalist at the last world championships Svetlana Barantseva and Margarita Sidorenko formed uh, two of the Russian team of three at those World Championships in Beijing, and they got a silver medal. You could see on her face. Something didn't go very well with that shot, and it, and it didn't hit the target. And then afterwards, there was a bit of a miscommunication between the two teammates. She started, Barantseva had started loading her bow before her, her teammate had put her hand up to indicate she could she could start so she threw her arrow on the ground nice. and started with another one Five marked with an asterisk, which is an indication that we will have a measure on that arrow. But with a missed arrow from the Russians, you'd expect the Italians to take this set quite comfortably. But the Italians haven't shot particularly well so far, so it's still time. Yeah.
Well, a 10 and a 9 to finish. Well, if Russia find the centre here, they could level up. They'll need three tens to do it. And the measure to go in their favour as well. Nine. So that is indication that uh, the set has gone already. So now it's all about uh, going through the process, going through the motions and getting themselves ready for the next set. Seven. And that really is the exciting thing about the set competition. Yeah, even if someone has a large lead, is, is close to victory, there's always an opportunity for that, that trailing team to come back. Ten. Well, a good finish there for Russia, uh, but the miss, well, it, it, it played its part. Uh, but Italy only won the set by four points, but they have taken it and the two set points to level the match here for bronze in the women's open team event. Well, Isabetta Mino there doing some, some exercise on the line. She, she wasn't happy with, with her shots in that last end, wants to make sure her process, her technique and her rhythm are, are in grains before we start again. Yeah, they want a consistency, don't they, of their uh, process that they go through. And you see each archer has their own unique uh, set of uh, movements that they go through to deliver the arrow. Yeah, and it's, it's all the more impressive in power archery because they do have limited, or some of the athletes do have limited mobility and a core in their centre of their body. And while it looks like archery is all on the arms, there's a lot of movement around the shoulder blades, around the, the torso that, that go into effectively pulling her bow back and, and consistently executing a good shot. Yeah, and of course, core strength is uh, crucial to balance and uh, a good solid foundation. So all square in the bronze medal match here in Sertigen Bosch. So Italy will shoot first again. And it's Veronica Floreno, the world number 15, who will get us underway. Eight. It's a fantastic shot and really see the perspective of the 70 meter target and, and just how high the arrow flies above the target on its way down the range. Nine. Well, that one's gone very high into the blue ring. And Sudarenko was shaking a full draw as well. It's very difficult to, to keep everything flowing when, when you're not in complete control at full draw, when, when you feel those wobbles. Damn. But a great finish there, trailing by three at the halfway stage in this third set. She's happy about that one. Yeah, and this really is very much better shooting for the 
2 2 there in perfect position to take command of this match. Turn. Well, a good finish from Italy. Uh, they've put this one out of reach for the Russians. And again, the Russians have to go through their process in order to prepare for the fourth set. Uh, 56 points, 56 out of a possible 60 points for this set. Pretty good shooting. Eight. Fifty one possible here. Brian Save has already scored a ten in nine. the set and finishes off with a nine. But Italy take the set points leading four two. And 50 points out of 60 on a 70 meter range isn't bad, but uh, that 56 uh, is perhaps a sign of things to come. A oh, cracking couple of tens from the Italians in that, that set. And that is the closest arrow to the center so far. That followed up by Annalisa Rosada as well, scoring a 10. Look, it, 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 this gives you some kind of perspective. 70 meters is a long distance. That tower on the right-hand side is as high as the archers are shooting in length. Excellent fact. Excellent fact. Uh, 70 meters is a is a tough distance. I mean, when you're when you're standing on the line and looking down range, it's like looking at the the, the end of a pin, the the point of a pin that, you, that you're aiming at. And when you really think about all the forces, all the distances, all the movement involved. The ability to hit the middle consistently almost becomes a little bit magical. To me. It doesn't quite bear belief. Yeah, and before you start getting uh, hounded with a whole load of complaints, Chris, I, I will just clarify that the tower of the cathedral is 73 metres. Uh, the archers are shooting over 70. Set for underway here in this bronze medal match. Russia training shoot first. first three arrows from Russia just when they needed it yeah I think the key here is Burev the middle archer um, she shot the miss she shot the five in the in the third set but she's followed that up with two nines recently and, and they'll need her to keep on the middle three. well that is a bit wild and uh, you can see that Floreno is not at all happy about that Moreno ranked 15th in the world, Rosada 10th, and Mino here is ranked number five in the world. Eight. 
And a bit of a spread for those first three arrows and a bit of a gap. Sidorenko is the world number seven. Barrett Saver, who shoots third for the Russians, is ranked third in the world. Uh, as you said, Chris, uh, Mirza Alieva, well, she's the world number 40, and uh, she's a, a bit of our, uh, a target athlete for us now. She needs to find the center of the target. Nine. Yeah, not a bad shot. She struggled earlier in this match, but she's really come together over the back straight. Well, 49 is a possible target score for Italy with three tens. Nine. Uh, that nine has put the set out of reach and we're going to be all square after the next three arrows. Yeah, this match is headed to a shoot off. Six. Two right for Florena. Doesn't look happy at all. That doesn't bode well for the Italians. Very good perspective there Nine. of uh, what the archer sees. And we get a good view of the flight of the arrow as well. And it looks all the more impressive when it lands in the middle. So there you go, a 42 after three uh, fairly wayward arrows from Italy at the beginning all of that right, set. And we're all square in this bronze medal match. Russia tied up with Italy at four apiece. Chris, uh, you alluded to the shoot-off. Uh, we have got a shoot-off for this bronze medal. How does it work? It's very simple. Each archer from each team shoots a single arrow, but they'll alternate. So it'll be one from Russia, one from Italy, one from Russia, and so on until, until all three athletes have shot. They'll tot up the scores of those three arrows, and the team with the with the highest three arrow score wins the match. If they're tied on score, it'll just be the team with the arrow closest to the middle of the target. So first we look for score, but we've also got to pay close attention to who gets the closest arrow to the centre as well. Looking pretty serious there. This clearly means a lot to the Russian team. A bronze medal at the World Championships is at stake here. So the Italians, as uh, they shot first at the beginning of the match, will shoot first in this shoot-off. And there's a lot of support for their team as well. You saw the Russian coach behind the Russian team just reminding them it's alternate shooting. So one, 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 one. It's it's not a usual situation to be in, so it's it's easy to forget. Well, yesterday uh, the conditions were uh, inclement at best, and we saw a lot of the athletes uh, wrapping up in between their ends. Uh, it's not too bad here today, but uh, we did see uh, Buryat Mirazileva uh, just putting a, a jacket over her shoulders. Well, for the shoot-off, we need uh, fresh targets, and uh, that's what we have. They also recalibrate the scoring system. Time to uh, relax, yeah, for the athletes. They don't have they don't have to worry about anything. It's interesting because the the para athletes don't have the same international circuit that there is for the able-bodied, and, and they're not in this arena format as often. Uh, it, it's it's high pressure. Well, we're ready to go for the shoot-off for bronze here in the women's open team event at the World Championships, Italy versus Russia. The Italians will shoot first. Five. 
three nervy shots in a row from Florino. Not the start Italy would have wanted. Seven. But that's only a two-point lead in this shoot-off for Russia. Still within reach. And Elisa Rosado. Seven. And this one could be the key shot. Mirza Alieva goes second for Russia. A lot of movement there. And yes. that is the result. She wasn't solid at full draw. She had no control over that arrow. That was not an ideal shot to be putting down in a shoot-off. Well, where there's an opportunity, there's also pressure. How can Mino handle it? Oh, that is a super shot there, right in the middle. And with it, Italy take the bronze medal, and you can see their joy. Svetlana Barantseva has to shoot her final arrow, though. Nine. As painful as that is, it is a nine that she finishes with. And uh, the miss from Russia has gifted Italy the shoot-off here. And the Italians have taken the bronze medal here at the World Championships. Yeah, great finish from uh, Italy. It was a shame for Russia because the, the middle archer, Mira Zavela, she, she had good arrows, she had bad arrows, and, and she just put a bad arrow in, in the shoot-off. But Italy still needed to shoot that last 10 to win it, and, and, and Mino delivered. Now there is confirmation. Italy are the recurve women's open team. Bronze medalists here in Sir Bosch. Sporting handshakes from uh, the Russians for the Italians. Uh, a celebratory hug there. Elisabetta Mino, the last of the Italians to leave the field of play. Well, there was that miss from Briat Mirza Aleva, but as you said, Chris, Elisabetta Mino needed a good shot to finish it off, and she certainly got that. Well, she's a very experienced para archer. Uh, we spoke to her at the start of the week, and she said she was here for three goals. She didn't get those, but she did get her places, the place she wanted to the, to the Paralympic Games. Italy, one of the big winners here in the quota tournaments for Tokyo 2020. Uh, you mentioned Tokyo 2020. How important is uh, this tournament for uh, Paralympic qualification? So this event is the, the start of the qualification period for the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics. There were 80 of the 140 places for athletes at the event available to win here. They've all been aside now. They've all been collected. So now the, for those who have got places, the hard work really starts. Well, now it's time for the Recurve Women's Open Team Gold Medal. We'll see China facing Turkey. China shot an 18.49 to be ranked first in the round. Turkey, a 17.14. Big difference to be ranked second. Turkey beat Italy to make the gold medal match. China beat Russia. So let's welcome China and Turkey out onto the field of play here 
in the Netherlands. Well, here are China. Gao Fangxie, Wu Chunyan, and Lin Dan Dan. Uh, Wu Chunyan was the individual world champion in 2015. Hadn't lost a match internationally, individually, until the Rio 2016. Paralympic Games, where she lost the final to Zara Namati. Yeah, we picked up uh, the mixed team gold at the Rio Paralympics, but here at Turkey, Yagmir Senyul, Merve Nur Erolu, and Zara Ozbay Torren. Erolu got the individual silver at the 2017 World Championships in uh, Beijing. Senyol is the youngest member of the Turkish team at 25 years old. Osbey Torren, the uh, elder stateswoman at uh, 36 years young. There's a lot of depth in this uh, Chinese team. Uh, team Silver at uh, the London Paralympic Games in 2012 for Go. And uh, double team gold for Lin Dan Dan at the 2017 World Championships and 2015 World Championships. It is China who will get this gold medal match underway. This Chinese team is the same team that won the gold in 2015, and it's it's a great illustration of para archery. You've got Wu Chunyan in a wheelchair, Lin Dan Dan on a stool, and Gao Fangxia standing up. All are permitted. Just depends on the the level of impairment of each archer. Well, this is taking some time, this setup. Well, she's uh, pulled out of that. Yeah, they've moved on to the next archer, and that's absolutely fine. Um, they've, they've obviously practiced that. If someone's not comfortable, they'll move on down the line and, and come back to that first archer later on in the, in the rotation. Each archer has to shoot one arrow in each rotation. Yeah, followed up with a, a two there. Um, I mean, yes, you, you say they practice for it, but clearly uh, uh, it's caused a, a little bit of disruption in the team. Six. Look, they, they're not in this situation very often. The, the arena, the, the large setting, it's, it's not a regular occurrence for, for these archers. So they'll need some time to get accustomed. Nine. Well, the opportunity has presented itself for the Chinese team to strike early here. Six nil winners over Russia in the semi finals. Nine. 
Five. Well, a ten will put this out of reach for Turkey. Eight. An eight leaves an opportunity for them. Uh, Wu Chun Yan was excellent in that first down, ten and a nine, but her two teammates not quite on the same pace as of yet. I think they've been a little bit lucky that Turkey's not come out on top form. Eight. Well, that's much better from uh, Yagmir Senyul. Also, a better shot from Sarah Osbay Torrent. After the two, she shot at the beginning of this set. Back into their original order. They, they do look a lot more comfortable. Nine. Well, three good arrows from Turkey, uh, but uh, the first three were where the damage was done, and China have taken the early set points here. In this set system, they have plenty of time to come back. Though. Just got to move on, forget it happened, learn from it, start again. Well, key player here for China, Chris. A 10 followed by an iron, and that was a cracking start, wasn't it? Absolutely, she, she, she's the key to this Chinese team. Uh, as an archer, she's very talented. Her technique is, is, is really very pretty to watch. The way she puts her fingers on the string is very soft. It always looks like she's in control of her, her bow and, and, and her, her process. We're just waiting for the targets to be cleared and uh, range declared safe to shoot. The 10-second countdown is up on the clock for the Turkish team. And Namir Senyal will start us again. Well, for her, she's going to start the step for the, for the first time, hopefully. I went through a process uh, neatly there. Score. Do you think it was just nerves, Chris, that got to her? First arrow in the first set of the, of the, of the final of the, the World Championships. She just needed to settle down. Six. And just look at those fingers on the string. They're very soft, very close to the tips. Nine, nine, very nine. much to control. Shea here going for a big score as well. Uh, 27 out of a possible 30 for the first three arrows. And China are applying the pressure. Seven. You can identify the different archers' arrows in the target by the, the color of the, the veins, the fletchings, and, and the knock. And you could see there that both of Yagma's arrows were, were low in the eight and seven on a horizontal Nine. line. 
that tells me she needs to move her sight and just bring them up. Well, 47 out of 60, not a bad score, but China can get to 57, and that nine right at the beginning has an asterisk next to it because it could be marked up to a 10. So, Gaia just needs to hit the target. Nine. And there we go. It's a commanding performance now from China. They lead four set points to nil. Uh, they will go and have a look at that first arrow. That could be marked up from a 54 to a 55. But China in dominant form in this gold medal match. So the scores you see in the, in the, in the bottom left, they are preliminary scoring from our laser system at the target. The judges always have to go and check and confirm every arrow value, just as they're doing now. And that first arrow from China, for example, it was on the line to the left, the 9-10 line, and it, it was checked by the judge and upgraded to the 10. Well, 55, well, it means something to the archers, <laughs> but uh, makes no difference to the score. They'd already won the set with 54. Turkey, well, they are in a spot of bother, but as Chris said earlier, the set system does allow them to fight back. They just need to score one more point than China in this set. Seven. Conversation between Erolu and the coach. Nine. But I'm not sure 22 points is really enough against this strong Chinese team. Nine. And Lin's been solid throughout. Just one errant arrow from her. a fantastic three hours from China. We always talk about finishing strong, finishing a match better than your opponent, and especially in the set system where anyone can come back at any time. That's what's most important, and that's what wins medals. Solid 10 there. 
from Senyo. Getting closer to the centre as well. Nervy moments for the Turkish team in the crowd looking on. Nice. A nice smooth action there. And a solid final three arrows from the Turkish team. Potential target of 58, though, for China. That's Wu Chen Yan's first arrow outside of the gold. She's been excellent throughout this match. Has to guess, it will be enough. No. And a four to tie the set points and to take the win. Long hold. Ten. Oh, but she puts it in the 10 to finish in style. And with a smile there from Gato, China were very, very good and too good for the Turkish team. They have taken the gold medal here at the World Championships, six points to nil. Wu Chen Yan started stronger in that match for China. She, she was ready for the field of play where, where her teammates might not have been, but she didn't do it alone. Gao finished with the 10 to secure the gold medal for China. Well, there we have it. The handshakes all around the Turkish team. Well, they started with a massive wobble from Yamya Senyo who couldn't get the first arrow out and they had to reset the order and that kind of set the tone but the Chinese team were excellent a 46 to start followed by two 55s and they've taken the world championship title in just three sets yeah yeah, uh, Chris, uh, I know there's a lot of respect amongst all of uh, these athletes, but our teams, is, is that really a sort of target, a sort of a hidden target, or a secret target to try and do a match in the, in the minimum number of arrows? I think you always want to win your match in the, the cleanest way possible. Um, over the last year of competition, some of the biggest events in the world, we've seen, we've seen some real tight ones, we've seen some clashes go all the way, and we've seen some some people win in, in, in just nine arrows in, in some of the best displays of shooting you know, that, that you could possibly have. And I think what's, what's interesting about this particular arena is everybody is struggling in the first end. So China did have two fifth sets of 55 points and that, and that was excellent. But they too started with a 46 and, that, and that's not quite the world class level they'd be looking for. Um. Yeah, they shot well throughout. Uh two tens in the uh, final set this is the last arrow finishing uh, in style there for a go yeah and, and while Wu might have been the the catalyst for that for that quick start it, it was Gao that finished it off it's a true true team effort yeah and Lin Dan Dan was uh, solid in the middle as well all three uh, playing their part Well, big crowd here and uh, the teams, well, they've been here for uh, a long week of shooting. And this is the final day of the World Archery Para Championships. Well, that's the women's team medals sorted. Coming up very shortly, it's the recurve men's open team bronze medal and gold medal matches. It's been a brilliant host city, Serdgan Bosch. 
great backdrop of uh, this fantastic Gothic cathedral, and it will be the backdrop for the medal ceremonies here in the Netherlands at these World Championships. And it's now time for the very first one today. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the recurve women open team. Dames and heren, here is the medaille ceremony for the category recurve dames open teams. Medals will be presented by World Archery Secretary General. The medailles will be overhandigd door the Secretary General of World Archery, Tom Dillen. The gifts will be presented by Seth Togenbos, Mayor. The cadeaux will be overhandigd door the Burgemeester of the Gemeente, Seth Togenbos, Jacques Mikkers. Representing Italy, bronze medal, namens Italia. Well, it took a shoot off to take the bronze medal. And the Italian team Veronica won that Florino. shoot off. Veronica Florino. Elisabetta Mino. Elisabetta and Elisa Mino. Rosada. Bronze medalist in 2017. Bronze medalists in 2019. Medals presented by uh, the World Archery Secretary General Tom Dillon. And the gifts being given out by the Mayor of Sertigan Bosch, Jack Mickers. And they have been a very, very good hosts. This beautiful Dutch city of Den Bosch, as it's known to the locals, Silver medal taking centre stage at this world-class archery tournament. Silver medal, namens Turkije. Merve Nur Eroglu. Turkey had a wobbly start in the gold medal match, which they never recovered from, but they Zira. are. The silver medalists here in the Netherlands. Janja Senjul, Mervyn Dürr, Erlu, and Zera Osbe Torun. The youngster on the right, Senjul, struggled at the beginning. And that nervy start, well, it was something they couldn't recover from. Gold medal and world champions representing the People's Republic of China. How do we do well, and it? There's a bit of a gift at the start China. for China, but they shot ever so well throughout this tournament and carried it through into the gold medal match, winning it 6 0 in the end. Lin Dandan. Dan. Wu Chunyan. And Go Fanche all played their part in taking China to the World Championship title of 2019. And if you're wondering what the mayor's handing out to the athletes, 
It's a local delicacy called a strobe waffle. Who are able, please rise for the national anthem. Of now the it's Republic time for China. the national anthem of the People's Republic of China. For the national anthem of the People's Republic of China. Well, there we have it. Confirmation, the women's open team gold medalist to China, beating Turkey to the silver medal. And Italy collected the bronze medal with victory over Russia. Last opportunity for these athletes to get their photo taken here in this team event. Oh, and a visit there from uh, the mascot for these championships. Archie. He's been smiling throughout the week. It's a happy mascot. I think maybe he's had one too many strobe waffles. If you could find me an unhappy mascot, I'll buy you a stroke waffle. That's infectious, that smile. teams clear the field of play here and the obligatory hug and high five from the mascot he's had a busy job here Archie Coming up now, it's the recurve men's open team medal matches on the 70 meter range here in front of this beautiful cathedral. And first up, it's time for the bronze medal match between China and India. Well, just ticking on at 10 o'clock. Let's have a look at how the teams got here. Obviously losing semi-finalists. Uh, China shot a 19-19 to be ranked first, but were knocked out by the USA in the semi-finals. It was an 18-36 in the ranking round for India, who ranked themselves seventh for the knockout phase. They beat Iran before losing to Russia. And it's an interesting lineup. Two seeded athletes in each team, and then one without a world ranking. Well, it's time to find out who makes up those teams as we go down to the range and welcome them out onto the field of play. Well, China lead the teams out for this bronze medal match.
two seated athletes in the team. And it's Zhao Liju who's standing along with Wang Sijun and Kin Ji Neng. And they are up against this Indian team. That quarter-final defeat of Iran was quite impressive. Iran is a very, very strong para-archery nation, and this Indian team came from almost nowhere. The 18-year-old Sahil, Arvinda Singh, and Chikara Vivek. Interestingly, none of the Indian team are wheelchair bound. Does that mean they'll still line up as uh, the Chinese team? Yeah, they've, they've all been classified as para athletes and able to shoot in this division and this competition. Um, so they still have limited mobility, even if mobility does not limit them to a wheelchair. Well, India will get us underway for this bronze medal match here in the men's open team competition on Recurve Sunday. Ten. A solid 10 to start, followed up by a 5. Nine. And a 9, so a wayward 5 in the middle of two great arrows. Starting things off for the Chinese team. Eight. Followed by Wang. This is Zhao Lixu. He was the Rio 2016 Paralympic Nine. mixed team gold medalist and he is the defending individual champion arriving at this tournament in Sadogenbosch. Interestingly, the three arrows from the Chinese team have gone high. They are the first arrows opening for a team or archer in this final field oh. that we've seen to land high. Nine-year-old Chikara Vivek to finish things off for India in this first set. Six. Well, two arrows high right and low left for India. Otherwise, the grouping's good. This grouping from China is even better. Zhao Li Zhu here, a five to tie things up. 
No. That's another nine and a solid start from China. No tens from them just yet, but uh, four nines and two eights is enough to take the first two set points. Yeah, but more than the, the, the score itself, look at the group. That, that's, a, that's a really tight cluster of arrows in the top of the nine, uh, the eight at the end. At the top of the target, and it's it's fantastic. Move that down 10 to 20 centimeters, and that's that's in the middle, and that's a that's a great score. Yeah, we're going to get a good uh, look at that right now, Chris. And uh, those two arrows uh, up are high in the eight. And like you say, move it down a centimeter or two, and uh, we're going to be getting tens and nines, and not nines and eights. Yeah, that, that's a that's a world class team group, and uh, they are China, the f the first team we've seen to to both come into this final arena and, and shoot well and shoot high. It's, a, it's an impressive start. Well, got a lot of cheering there for the Indian, uh, for the Chinese team. And uh, despite there being uh, quite a few of the uh, Indian team, there they are uh, in the crowd. Uh, they're very polite and respectful, just applauding. Well, India trailing by two after the first set will shoot first. It's Harvinder Singh who will get the second set underway. Hey. Teenager Sahil Six. seven. Again, uh, spread from uh, the Indian team. Seven. Well, another good grouping. Just uh, a bit more to the left from the first six arrows for the Chinese team. Ten. And there is our first ten. It's marked as a nine, but there's the asterisk, so that means we will go to a measure. Well, again, a bit of a spread, but uh, two of the arrows grouping up well for India in the last three. And it's a big opportunity here for China to get the set points again in this Seven. bronze medal match.
in the first set, all of Chinese arrows were, were landing high in the target, just above the nine now. Oh. They've shifted off to the left, come down a little bit, but they're not moving that group effectively into the middle. Archers lose a lot of points by grouping well, but not grouping on the center of the target. Yeah, but they've done enough here. Um, a 50 out of 60 for China will give the set point. That could be promoted to a 51. Uh, subject to that third arrow, which is currently marked as a nine going up to a ten. Uh, but uh, you've got to say, uh, whilst China aren't, you know, setting the world alight with a 52 and a 50, um, India are struggling a little bit, just a 48 and then a 45 in that second set. Not really good enough. Every, every team wants to shoot their best scores in the finals field of play, but all you need to do is shoot one more point each set than your opponent. And this is uh, China's last shot, uh, and uh, Zhao Li Zhu hitting the 10 for, well, notionally the first time in uh, this uh, bronze medal match, subject to that nine, of course, uh, of the third arrow being marked up. He is China's most experienced archer, uh, most experienced male recurve archer. He is the defending individual champion. He, he won't defend his title here in, uh, in Den Bosch, but he has the pedigree and the talent needed to, to, to perform at a high level. Well, Zhao Liju needed that uh, second arrow of his to go in the 10 to confirm he scored the first 10 for China, uh, but he did in fact score it with his first arrow in that second set uh, that was moved up from a nine to a 10. So it was a 51 for China in the second set. They lead four set points to nil, and India will start the third set. And they have their work cut out for them. They need to start scoring it better than they are. Harvinda Singh to get us underway in the third set of the men's team bronze medal match. Nine. Seven. 25 out of a possible 30. Each archer has their own process they go through. I particularly uh, like Kin Ji Neng's eyebrow raising. I'm not sure that's necessary to hit the middle, but he's done it every time. If he looks good while he shoots, can't complain, can he? Eight. It's interesting to be indicative of some tension he has his neck and, and shoulder uh, as he's going back to the bow. Nine. Again, the grouping not too bad from the Chinese team. But they're just landing in the same place. Uh, they're, they're losing points by not moving their sights, by not centering the sights on the middle. Yeah, only gaining a point advantage. But of course, they only need Ten. to score a single point here. And there is a great shot from Harvinder Singh into the center of the target. And another one. India have found the centre here. That shot looked soft. I, d I didn't think that one was going to hit the middle. I thought that was going to go low and right. But he pulled it off. No. So, pressure applied from India here. They are trailing by four set points. But they've uh, put some pressure on the Chinese team now. 
who have got a potential tar target or total of 56 points here. Nine. And look at that. Almost from nowhere, two tens for the Indian team have put them right back in this match. But China's still shooting so well that they should have won this set. No. Down into the nine, so a bit of an adjustment there from Zhao Liju at the end, dropping that one out of the group of the other five. Uh, but Chris, you're right. It's uh, the grouping from the Chinese team is very, very good, but just not in the center. But India, well, they really looked like they, they'd lost this one, they were not in it. And then all of a sudden, two tens from Harvinder Singh and Sahil put them right back in it. So uh, the grouping from China has been uh, more solid, more consistent. Uh, but the problem is, it's not in the centre. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and it's just a, it's a mixture of process and grouping and, and moving things into the middle. What I really like about China is, despite there are three archers, despite there are three archers shooting their own arrows, their own routines, they're grouping together as a team. And you should be able to move those arrows then into the middle of the target and get the tens, the points that you need to win the match. So is that last arrow, that one that's a little bit lower and down to the right, an indication that they can go for the centre? Because that was the very last arrow, that one out of the group. It's an indication that, that they might have moved their sights, so they might be on the middle this time, or Zhao shot a bad shot. We're about to find out which one it is. India's still trailing, but they fought back strongly in the third set. They need to continue that fight now. Harvinder Singh to get the fourth set of the bronze medal match underway. Nine. And that is a good start. Eight. Beauty to finish there from Chikara Vivet. No. The eyebrow working again there. You can see the tension in his neck and his head as well. It's it's a very tense shot at full draw. I don't know what his, his impairment is, but maybe it has something to do with it. No. Well, that's a very a good group. That's uh, the best so far from the Chinese team, and they've been very good throughout. And, and those two are on the same level of Zhao's arrows last time, so it's just they did move their sights, and they have brought the group down. They're still landing a little left. Hey. Well, Zhao was the one that uh, adjusted at the end of the last set. And he's moved out of the group. They trail by a point. India have got a big chance here. Oh. Hey. He let off the pressure on, on the back end of his shot. He didn't execute it cleanly, and that's, that's just why it kind of got away from him and fell a little bit low. Seven. Well, that's gone into the seven. As we said, the conditions favourable for good shooting here. No wind at all on the range. Eight. 
So a 50 set as the target. 24 required to take the match for China. Oh, three eights will be enough. Eight. An eight is required to win the match. They just need to draw a level with India to take the one set point required to get to the wing target of five set points. Seven. They've shot a seven here. Uh, China have, uh, well, they've played into the Indians' hands. The Indians have started to shoot better and the Chinese are starting to fall away. They've squared the match at four set points apiece. And that means we have a tied score after the regulation sets. All of uh, China's arrows are over to the left. We have to ignore that last shot from Zhao Lixu. He, he was set up perfectly, but it just looked like it collapsed when he let the arrow go. It could have gone anywhere. It went It went right, it went to the seven. It looked like it was close to what he was aiming for, but it wasn't, it was miles off. Well, we're gonna get a closer look at it here. Here are the arrows uh, from China, and that seven stands out, doesn't it? Yeah, but if they'd moved their sights over, if, they, if those eights and those nines had just moved over a little bit, they'd easily have won this match. They're, they're really penalising themselves here. Well, India did fight back strongly in that third set, and it was a good start to the fourth. Uh, but uh, China just fell away. So we will have a shoot-off. Chris, remind us how this works. So each archer from each team will shoot one arrow. Alternately, it'll be one from India, one from China, and, and so on and so forth until... All six arrows are shot until each athlete from each team is shot. The points and the target will be totted up and the team with the most points will win the match. If it's still tied after that, then it'll be the, the team with the arrow closest to the center that wins it. And uh, we said before that the targets replaced. Explain why, why the targets replaced. If you haven't already, this is a this is a critical point, you know, in the in the match. It's a critical point in the in the tournament. Um, a line calls a. Uh, Light calls could make all the difference. This is a sport of millimeters. We don't want any 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 old arrow holes distorting the lines and, and giving an incorrect result. So for the shoot off, the targets are replaced and the lasers recalibrated so we know we get the, the true winner announced here for the world championship title. Or bronze medal match. We well, said uh, India uh, Pulled a surprise, sprung a surprise in the quarterfinals, beating Iran 5-4. That required a shoot-off. And they're in a shoot-off against uh, probably the favoured Chinese team for this bronze medal match. In with a shout. They've got the support as well. All of a sudden, the Indian supporters are getting very vocal. And that's the judge reminding them that it's alternate shooting. One from India, then one from China, then one from India. It's, it's a different setup to, to what we've seen for the last four sets, and it's an unusual situation because this only happens in finals fields uh, for television. Well, it will be Harvinder Singh of India who will shoot first in this tiebreaker. Three arrows for each team and the bronze medal at stake at these World Championships. Nine. Not a bad start. It's very confident, very soft, very controlled. Quite impressive. Kin Ji Neng, the 34-year-old, will shoot the first arrow for China. Hey. Mini advantage to India. That's still over to the left. They haven't learned the lesson of the Chinese team. Seven. Sahil puts it in to the seven. A 
opportunity for Wang Si Jun to strike back for China. That looks like it's right on the line. It's marked as a 10. The advantage switches over to China. It is in their hands. Chikara Vivek to shoot India's last arrow. Nine, ten, liner. That one looks more of a nine than a ten. So a 25 set from India. Xiao didn't finish the, the match well. A seven required. Seven. <laughs> he shot a seven as well. He looks on, a little nervous, a little tense. And he's not happy with the shot, but a seven was required. And China have just squeezed over the line to the bronze medal. They will go down to the targets just to check that. It's a bit difficult because that nine on the, on the right side for India was, was called with a, a star originally because it looked like it might have touched the line. They just need to confirm that it hasn't and then China will take it, but Zhao Lixu could have done way better there. He did exactly the same thing with his last hour of the, of the main match. Well, they're on the Indian target. That, that arrow to the right there of the 10 circle is the one in question. Does it get marked up? It doesn't, and China are confirmed as the winners. They've had to battle this uh, bronze medal match right the way through. Uh, as Chris said, their grouping was good, just not in the center. The first six arrows going to the right, the second six going to the left, and they couldn't quite dial in. India fought back to level up and force a tiebreaker. A seven was required for Zhao to take it, and a seven is what it got. China are the bronze medalists. Yeah, more than anything, China were, were shooting against themselves there. It's the lesson they need to take from this experience is, is that they need to move their sights, they need to be more proactive in moving their sights and maximizing the points they can get at the target. Archery is about two things, about, about grouping well, about consistent shooting and about moving that group, moving that consistent shooting to maximize the points you get on the scoreboard. They did one, but they didn't do the other. Well, it was enough for bronze. China will be on the podium. Kin Jinyang. Wang Sijun and Zhao Lixu will have a look back on that one. But they have made it to the podium. And here are the three shots from that uh, shoot off. Wang going in the middle as he did throughout. A seven required to take it. And there, it's a solid seven. But it was just enough to take the medal here at the World Championships. A lot of Russian support in the crowd. And uh, there's some fans on part of the team for the USA. Coming up now, it's the gold medal match in the recurve men's open team. This for the world title in Bosch, and it is the USA versus Russia. We take a look at how the teams got here. USA shooting an 1856 in the ranking round to come through ranked fifth. Russia in 1902 to be ranked third. The USA beat Korea 5-4 in a shoot-off in the quarterfinals, and then China in a shoot-off 5-4 in the semifinals. Russia came through Thailand 5-3 and a dominant victory over India 6-0 in the semifinals. So it's the USA versus Russia for gold. The USA lead us out here in this gold medal match. Got a lot of support in the crowd.
45 year old Eric Bennett. It's 33 year old Michael Luco and the 30 year old Timothy Palumbo. And here come the Russian team. Ruslan Uko, the 29-year-old. That's the 25-year-old Bato Seydendor Ziev. And a 42-year-old Anto Ziepayev. Well, the Americans stepped out very confidently here, Chris. They looked uh, ready for action. Now this uh, this American team, very confident. Three great guys. Eric Bennett shoots with a mouth tab, doesn't have one arm. Michael Lucco missing the lower part of one of his legs. And Timothy Palumbo with his famous doorstop that you could just see on the left of the screen there. That helps him balance on the shooting line. And it's Russia to get us underway. This for the gold medal in the men's open team event. Seven. Four. Well, Zirpayev with a seven to start things off. But uh, Oka shooting a four there. Nine. But it's Bear that we'll be looking for to lead this Russian team. He's the world record holder. But Beto, sorry, Beto for the for the Russian team. He's the world record holder for the 70 meter ranking rounds. Timothy Palumbo to start things off for the USA. Eight. Good arrow from Michael Lacal. And here we see Eric Bennett. Nine. Very impressive. Another nine. And a strong lead at the halfway stage of the first set. And we've switched from seeing teams going low with their first arrows on this final field to teams going high. Seven. Second seven for Zia Paev. Eight. Zizendor Ziev shot a nine with his first arrow. That on the 7 8 line will get marked up as 8. Six. That looks a little rushed from Tim. Tim's going to be a father in a couple of months' time. Get this out of the way first. Seven. So, a seven there means that a four will tie things up. Anything more, and they've got the first two set points. Ten. Oh, a lovely ten there from Eric Bennett, and a little wink. He's a confident chap, isn't he? He's fantastic, and the way he shoots is absolutely brilliant. 
Obviously, he doesn't have his right arm, so he uses a, a mouth tab, a, a small piece of material that's wrapped to the string, and he grabs it with, it with the back of his teeth, and then he pulls, well, he pushes out with his front arm to pull back the bow. But the, the most interesting thing is, is it completely changes the dynamic of a recurve bow, because recurves rely on the left-right movement of the fingers um, to clear the riser, to... to, to to send the arrow in flight in the kind of snake-like motion. And because he uses the mouth tab on his teeth, he doesn't have that left-right movement from the fingers. So the arrow actually flies different out of his bow to any other recurve. It flies with the tail uh, oscillating upwards and downwards rather than left to right. Well, confident start from the USA. Look at the score, though. 49 plays 43. 49, not uh, the biggest score we've seen so far today in a set. Oh, there's plenty of room for improvement there. Tim, Tim Palumbo's second arrow looks a little bit rushed. But again, it, it's one more point than your opponent in each set, and, and that's enough to win. And one set down, a few more to go. Second set of the gold medal match. Russia trailing by two set points. We'll shoot first. Ten. Uh, Anton Zierpeyev has found the middle. He got a team gold in 2017 and an individual bronze. He's actually part of the team that won the gold at the 2015 World Championships as well. Seven. So seven from Ruslan Ucker. But uh, in the same line, Beto Tizendor Ziev calming himself before his first shot of this set. No. And that's a good arrow as well. That's much better from Tim. He's not taken that six to heart. He's he's come come back out there, come back out and shot a shot a better arrow. Nine. I like how Michael really uses a wide stance to brace himself on on his base. He doesn't have the lower part of one of his legs and that wider stance allows him to keep a lower center of gravity and, and a stronger platform for his shot. Nope. Yeah, got a good look at the uh, clicker there. As you uh, described, it, he's got a unique arrow flight. Well, and the clicker is also unique. It comes down from the top and, and the rest he's using is a compound rest where the, the arrow sits on something below and not to the left or right. It's, it's all part of the same vertical movement Eight. well they edged the first three arrows the USA but Russia starting to zone in on the center see a with an eight occur to shoot second again Six. And that one's drifted out he's team gold in 2015 mixed team silver in the same year Seven. And that one's drifted down and to the right. So another big opportunity for the USA. All of the Russian archers have had loose shots. It's not one person that's... Nine.
Bit of a longer hold here. Turn! But works out well. Down to Bennett to finish this one off. Nine. Well, a nine, solid, and it's a 55. So the scores improved as well from the USA. Things are looking very ominous for Russia. They did improve from a 43 to a 47, but the USA have zoned in on the center of the target and lead by four set points to nil in this gold medal match. Well, it said they're zoned in on the center, shooting a 49 in the first set, but uh, it was a whole cluster of nines for the USA in the second set, and then that brilliant 10. Good group, all centered around the middle, and, and you know, a, a true team effort there. Well, Michael Lucklow there was the one that shot that 10. It was a great arrow, the fifth one of the set. And they look very confident and very relaxed. So the range is clear. Stadium announcer trying to get the crowd behind the Russians here. They certainly need all the help they can get. Anton Ziapayev will get the third set underway, and they need to start very well indeed, the Russians. Hey. Three eights, it's okay, but it, but it's not gold medal material. Well, and also they're, they're they're not all in the same spot, are they? So there's no real pattern to them. Right, there's three different archers there, and if they're not in sync, they're not shooting in the same place, then it's very difficult to work as a team hey. to fix it. Yeah, and there's not much communication between the Russians, whereas uh, the Americans uh, are just having the odd casual world with each other. Uh, showing how important communication is. Nine. Solid stuff from Michael Luckow. Another close up of Eric Bennett and his unique style. Eight. Those are frustrating, those arrows, those ones that land just outside a ring. You know, they're not a bad shot, but just not quite there. Nine. Good shot from uh, Anton Ziapayev. Grouping. So Bato Tsidendor Ziev with his last arrow potentially of the match. Hey. And a 49. It's better again. They've improved through every set, but the Americans have as well. Tim Palumbo nine. into the nine.
So still a potential target of 54 for the USA with room to spare. Eight. Wasn't overly happy with that shot, but an eight was the result. Eric Bennett here, you were saying he's an eight to win. great character. A seven is required to take the gold medal and the world title. Well, he's pulled out of that. Yeah, uh, he, he, he flinched at full draw. He wasn't, he wasn't committing. He wasn't confident. He didn't let it go. And he hasn't got a lot of time now. Five seconds. Seven required. Nice. Oh, he puts it into the nine. And no wonder there's a big cheer from him. They looked confident when they came out onto the shooting line here in Sertigenbosch. They looked confident right the way through. Uh, just to add to the entertainment, Eric Bennett had to reset his final arrow. Needed a seven for the world title. He got a nine. Uh, what a fantastic finish from the US. They really worked together as a team throughout that match and you know they were the better team out there in the finals arena. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, gold medal and world champions. Well, Bennett, I'm absolutely Michael positive Lugo, that wasn't a, a bit of deliberate USA. showmanship there from Eric Bennett, but boy did it add excitement at the end of a match that was dominated by and the USA course, and they gentlemen. are the world the champions respectful applause for the silver medalist and two-time world champions team Russia there is confirmation the USA have taken gold in the recurve men's open team event here in the Netherlands and they are the 2019 world champions Athletes clear the field of play. They were the better team, the USA. They beat Russia to take the gold medal and the 2019 world title. But what an end to the match. That was the uh, final arrow and the celebration from Eric Bennett. But just before that, he'd actually drawn the arrow already. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if the clicker had gone off or he just anticipated the, going, the, the clicker going off and then decided he wasn't ready. And it, it just that, that kind of flinch that that you don't want in the last hour of a gold medal match. But I'm super impressed he came down, he reset, and he got himself back in back in line, back up there, and back on, on the gold in, in a very short amount of time as well. Well, very impressive stuff from the USA, and in particular, Eric Bennett. Matt Stutzman and some of the other para-archers who shot yesterday in this finals arena, including Ben Thompson, who won the individual compound men's gold medal. Watching on as their teammates will collect this world championship title. Well, coming up very shortly, it's the mixed team bronze medal and gold medal matches. And that will be the team matches concluded here on Recurve Sunday. Well, the skies are very, very clear today. Yesterday it was windy, rainy, the light conditions were changing. Here, the, the conditions are, are very good for some high shooting, but what's played its part, I think, is a little bit of nerves. The scores haven't been perhaps as high as we'd expect. Uh, and I really think not having that practice field right next to the field of play has had an effect. They haven't had a chance to really bed in. Well, now it's time for the medal ceremony for the men's team open here in Sertigenbosch. Let's welcome the medalist back out onto the field of play.
medals will be presented by World Archery Vice President. De medailles zullen worden overhandigd door de vicevoorzitter van World Archery, Maria Emma Gaviria. The gifts will be presented by the Netherlands Paralympic Committee President. De cadeaus zullen worden overhandigd door de voorzitter van het Nederlands Paralympisch Comité, Raymond Blondel. Bronze medal representing the People's Republic of China. The bronze medal namens de Volksrepubliek China. Oh, China shot very well in the bronze medal match against India. Their centering wasn't quite there, and India forced them into a shoot off, but they won Jin, that tiebreaker. Kin Ji Yang. Wang Sijun and the star player, the 28-year-old Zhao, Zhao Li Chuan. individual champion in 2017, team bronze medalist in 2019. The medals were presented by uh, World Archery Vice President Maria Gavria and. Uh, the Waffles, they're present here, presented by Raymond Blondel, the Dutch Paralympic Committee President. China with the bronze medal. Silver medal representing the Russian Federation. Silver medal. Well, Russia Rizlo. didn't quite hit their finest form in the gold medal match, but they are on the podium to collect their silver medals. Ruslan Ochur. Ruslan Ochur, the 29 year old. Bato Sedendorziev in the Bato middle there. Sedendorziev. Just 25 years old, probably was their star player in the final. And the 42 year old Anton Ziapayev. Anton Ziapayev. do look a little disappointed. 43, 47 and a 49 are not the scores that they would expect. But the pressure of a finals range played its role, I'm sure. Gold medal and world champion. Representing for the, the 2019 World Archery Power Champions of the Men's Recurve Open Team event are the USA. Eric Bennett. A lively character. Gave us an exciting finish despite the dominant performance from the USA. Michael Luckout in the middle. He was solid. As was Tim Palumbo, the 30 year old. Luckout and Palumbo on the team that got the silver medal in 2017. Well, they've got one better here along with Eric Bennett. They are the world champions. Confident from the start, and they shot very well. And they will be, well, they are very deserving as they are about to hear the national anthem.
applaus voor een athlete. Dames en heren, Sert Ogenbos nog één keer een heel groot Sert Ogenbos applaus voor onze top drie atleten. Well, a proud moment for Eric Bennett, Michael Luckow and Timothy Palumbo. In fact, a proud moment for the USA who've taken gold, the Russian team with silver. And of course, the Chinese team with the bronze medal. Proud moment for them all as Archie, the mascot, leads them off the field of play here in Den Bosch. A confident USA throughout, Chris. Yeah, and, and a true team effort. There was no leading archer, there was no the trailing archer. There were, it was just three men working well together uh, to deliver a good performance in this finals arena. Of course, Eric Bennett sealed it, but he couldn't have done it without Tim and Michael as well. No, but he did do it with a certain amount of style and flair of his own. I, th I think if you I think if you look back on it, I don't think he'd want to have that flinch on his last hour. I think he would have rather have delivered his uh, his winning shot cleanly. Men's and women's titles decided. Now it's time for the mixed team medal matches on the 70 meter range here in the Netherlands. First up, the bronze medal match between Korea and China. Korea came through the ranking round with a 12.40 to be ranked fourth, beat Japan in the quarterfinals, lost to Italy in a shoot-off in the semis. China at 12.75 to be ranked second from the ranking round. They beat Great Britain 5-1 in the quarterfinals before losing to Russia also in a shoot-off. So we will see the mixed team bronze medal match between Korea and China right now let's go down to the range to welcome the teams out onto the field of play well first out it's the team from korea joe jang moon with her teammate Kim Min Su. And we're very used to seeing Korean archers on the field of play. But the able bodied team and, and the para team are two separate entities. Um, and uh, para team hasn't been as successful as the able bodied team on the international circuit. 50 year old, 52 year old Joe Jang Moon has got bronze medal, though, at the World Championships in the team event in 2013 and 2015. Korea will go up against China. Gao Fang Sheik and her teammate Wang Si Jun. Gao Fang Zhe and uh, Wang Si Jun have already been out on uh, to the finals range here. Gao, the London 2012 team silver medalist, picked up a team gold in 2015. The mixed team, though, is a different beast. So the start of the mixed team bronze medal match and it's Korea who will get things underway with Kim Min Soo. Hey. Hey. Well, two eights to get us underway here, Chris. And uh, 
Just for those of the viewers who knew, how does the oh. uh, mixed team competition work? A mixed team archery, we're still using the set system. It's four arrows per set, and the winner of each set receives two set points. A tied set is one point for each team, and the first no. mixed team to five set points wins the match. Well, two nines from China gives them the mini advantage. Six. Ooh, and a low right six there from Kim Min Su. And China will sense a big opportunity. Joe needs a good shot here. Five. Overcorrection. It's difficult to know. It's difficult to know how comfortable these archers are in these first hours. And we've seen it time and time again in this finals arena. Their first sets, just all their first ends, just aren't, hey. aren't as good as the rest of the match. Well, just a scoring arrow here will do the job. Nine. Oh. Solid from China. And just like that, the two set points in the first set go to the Chinese team. Yeah, and, and Gao was great in the, the women's team final as well. There were some hours where she just held on for quite a long time. And, and it seemed to be she was losing control, but she wasn't. She was still in complete control of her shot, and she still delivered good arrows, even when she spent all that time at full draw. real sign of uh, over concern from the Korean team uh, we talked about uh, bespoke colorings and equipment how about that for a wheelchair rim yeah and like we said the wheelchairs are really a, an extension of the archery equipment they're just as customized and just as important to an archer's technique as the as the bow and arrow and while you're customizing why not make it look good as well So Korea trailing here in the, the bronze medal match. Big, deep breath there from Kim Min Su as he settles himself. Nine. Seven. Another one high and left, and it's another 16 from Korea to start the set. Six. China have gone the other way. So, mini advantage Korea. Possible target of 40 across these four arrows, of course. No. Both of Kim Min Su's arrows landing in the bottom left of the, of the gold. A kind of consistent landing point is great. In these short matches, gives you a lot of information, tells you you can move your sight a little bit. Six. And those two are grouped up nicely as well, but uh, up and to the left. Look, I'd rather have those two next to each other than on opposite sides of the target. At least uh, Zhou Jiang Moon shot two consistent hey. shots and they've landed in the same place. She, she can adjust for that. Well, that's six. From Joe has given China a chance that perhaps they thought wasn't going to be there. Eight. And an eight levels things up, and the two teams share the set points. A 
think Korea are going to be the more disappointed of the two teams from the second set. Yeah, we always talk about finishing strong, uh, and they didn't finish strong here. Zhou Zhang Moon shot that six, and that kind of put the set out of reach for the Korean pair. Yeah, I mean, the groupings, or oh, the pairings are together. We see two uh, low and to the left, the two nines, and then those two arrows, they're not too far away from each other, so consistent, but uh, a six and a seven result. But, but consistent is the first step. Consistent is good, and then you can move the results. Uh, and if Jo Jang Moon knows her sight, knows her arrow flight, knows how her bow reacts, she can move that sight, and she can move those arrows into the middle for this next end. Well, they gave themselves a chance, Korea, to draw level, uh, but that six uh, took the potential advantage away. They managed to salvage a point from the second set, but trail by three set points to one in this bronze medal match. So Kim min Su will start things off for Korea in the third set. Nine. Kim's made the necessary adjustment from the bottom left of the gold towards the middle. Nine. And so is Joe Drang Moon. That's, that's really good stuff. Yeah, so as you said, they both... Uh, had consistency on their side, they adjusted their sights and improved their score immediately. Hey. An adjustment for the site for Wang Sijun there. Ten. And our first ten. Yeah, and Gao's been getting more and more impressive throughout this this tournament. First 10 for Korea. Well, that really is a lesson in, in learning and reacting to, to previous arrows. Six. Well, that single six has put the set out of reach, and Korea are going to get the two set points and draw level. Nine. A good final arrow there from Go Fang Shi, but uh, the six, the single arrow six, is uh, what did it for them. And Korea have drawn level. Yeah, and, and Korea really shot well there, and they kept everything in the gold, three nines and a ten. That's the kind of that's the kind of sets we'd expect to see at this level in a World Championship medal match. Yeah, the momentum certainly with the Korean team now. They shot a 27 at the start, but have improved to a 31 and then a 37. Fairly consistent from China, a 35, a 31 and a 33. But at the moment, the wind is behind the Koreans. Lots of fans looking on in anticipation. This is a tight one. This for the bronze medal in the recurve open mixed team event here in Bosch. With the scores tied up, Korea will start things off in the deciding set. No. Six. 
Seven. Zhou Zhang Moon has leaked out to the left again. Difficult to understand why after she brought things back into the middle that previous set. Nine. And uh, Wang has found the middle again. Nine. Great stuff there. Good grouping just when they needed it both in the nines and they have the mini advantage pressure back on Korea Ten. Well, they've set a target of 34 points. China potentially could get to 38. So they have room to wiggle. Nine. Still a very good grouping. An eight is all that's required to win, and they've both been eight shooting nines. Nine. And that's another nine to finish things off. The match swung one way and another, but in the end, it was China who were more consistent in the deciding set, and they've taken the bronze medal by five set points to three over Korea. And well, that's the second winning arrow that Gao Fangxia has delivered in this arena. She delivered a winning arrow in the match of the, the women's team event, and now in this mixed team bronze medal match. Super impressive archer. Even when she holds on for a long time, she's in absolute control, and it's shown. Well, China went 3-1 uh, up in the second set. Korea fought back with a very solid third set. But in the deciding set, when the pressure was on, it was China who came through with 36 points to 34 to take the bronze medal. Five set points to three. China will be on the podium a little bit later on today. Well, Gao was the one who took the Chinese over the line, but it was four nines from them. Let's uh, look at uh, one of the Russian Federation cheerleaders. And here is Gao's final shot here. Three nines already in the set. It was a good grouping and a celebration there as they take the bronze medal. Russian fans in the crowd looking on in the sunshine. Now it's time for the gold medal match in the recurve open mixed team event where we'll see Italy shoot over the 70 meter range against Russia. Italy shot a 12-14 to be ranked eighth for the knockout stage. Russia a 12-74 to be ranked third. Italy took out Ukraine in a shoot-off, and it was another shoot-off they required in the semi-finals against Korea. Russia beat Mongolia in the quarter-finals with a shoot-off, and they also had a second shoot-off in the semi-finals to beat China. So it will be Italy versus Russia for gold here in Den Bosch. Welcome the athletes to the field of play for the recurve open mix team gold medal match. They're coming out first. 
it's Italy. There is Stefano Travisani, the 33-year-old, and his teammate Elisabetta Mino, who's 33. They'll be shooting on target number one. the Russian team led out by 41 year old Svetlana Baratseva and her teammate the 42 year old Barto Tizendor Ziev. Both these Russian archers shooting for individual bronze medals here in Satogenbosch as well. Fantastic tournament for the Russian power team. Trails only China in number of places qualified to the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. Tight matchup though. Elisabetta Mino on the Italian side is a uh, rare mixed team bronze, uh, Paralympic bronze, uh, London 2012 Paralympic individual silver and was part of the team that won the bronze medal match at the 2017 World Championships. Mixed team gold for Stefano Travisani at the last World Championships as well. So two strong teams dueling it out for the gold medal. Six. Russia starting this gold medal off with Svetlana Barantseva shooting a six. Seven. We've let some of these teams off for having wayward first shots, but both of these archers have been out in their finals field of play already, so they get no pass. They get no pass at all. A harsh taskmaster. Trevisani the first arrow Seven. for Italy and he's also low and in the seven immediate adjustment nine a strong nine from Elisabetta Mino and that draws a big cheer from the Italian fans in the crowd Some confusion there about who was going to shoot. I think Svetlana Baranseva thought there was more arrows to come from Italy, but the clock was ticking on her. Seven. Well, lots of confusion in uh, the Russian camp here. Yeah, maybe uh, Svetlana hadn't indicated that, 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 that Beto could start. Uh, left her with not much time at all. Ten. Gets the arrow out and produces the best shot so far from the Russian team. Coach reminding him to raise his hand and say he was done as well. That's part of the rules for para archery and the rotation in the team events. Seven. Well, an eight just about enough for Italy to take the first two set points. But what a strange start to this gold medal match. Yeah, and, and the kind of fumble with the arrows there from Beto delivered the best arrow of all of them as well. It's an uh, unusual beginning. Yeah, Italy also, when they had a, a big opportunity, only just scraped over the line to take the set points. Here we see the coach reminding the Russians uh, of uh, what, what their duties are. It's not just shoot at the target, is it? Well, they've got to communicate. They've got to talk to each other and they've got to tell each other 
and the judge when they finish shooting in, in mixed team archery. They've got to indicate with their hand and, and usually say something as well. In my opinion, it, I think it's a bit more difficult with them back to back. If they were facing each other, it might be easier to talk to each other. Yeah, I mean, they can set up face to face, can't they? It's entirely their choice. Perhaps that's something they'll change before their next tournament. Should they be allowed to shoot together again, of course. Stern look on the face of Barto Cizendorziev. Russia trailing after a nervy start. We'll shoot first in the second set. Hey. Well, he very clearly raised his arm at that time to indicate that he had finished his shot. Save it to shoot the second arrow for Russia. Hey. Ten. First ten for the Italians from Stefano Travisani. So the Russians have got Beto shooting first in both of the rotations, but in that in that confused first set, it was Svetlana that shot first in the, the second rotation of the of the first set. I'm not sure whether that was intentional or they just weren't quite sure what they were doing if they were going to be switching. It, Turn! it wasn't clear, that's for sure. Well, they found the centre. I think it may be a little too late in the second set. Italy have a potential total of 39 here. Seven. That's gone down to 36. With that, seven. Nine. Good, good finish from Elizabeth Amina. Two nines in this set, a nine and eight in the first set. She's been consistent. Travisani shot the 10, but he's only had sevens outside of that. Consistency beats flash in the pan sends any day. Well, three set points to one for the Italians. Uh, they had a chance uh, to go 4 nil up there, but a dropped seven from Stefano Travisani on their third arrow in that second set means they had to share the points. Well, Beto Cidendorzev throwing out that 10 that you mentioned, uh, along with Svetlana Barantseva as we follow that one in to the 10. Just the, the amount of distance that arrow travels is, is phenomenal. It's not a direct line to the target, it's a huge arc. Yeah, and that uh, replay shows that very, very well you some perspective of what the archers are shooting at and to hit the 10 there shooting at something uh, no bigger than an apple in the center of the target from 70 meters you see what the bottom of the limb tips are resting on um, the, the Russian team are putting them on little pads so they don't have to put them on the floor the, the bottom of the bows well Russia trailing still shoot first at the start of the third set Ten. That's a great start from Sejan Zorziev. Nine. 
impressed. Never didn't look all that comfortable as she uh, released that arrow. No, and she, and she makes a lot of her setup movement before she starts drawing back the bow, which is quite interesting as well. She pushes out a lot with her arm at the bottom. Seven. The bow rested on the floor before lifting it up. Well, a little bit of movement in the drawing finger for Travasani. It's his fourth seven of the match. Nine! Russians could put this one out of reach with these two arrows. Nine. Watch her push her arm out at the bottom and then lift everything up. Eight. Well, an eight sets a target of 36 for Italy. That's all they can score, but they need two tens to do so. Is this the start of the Russian fight back? Eight. And the answer already is yes. Russia will draw level here, no matter what Nino scores. Eight. Four. So it's all square between the Italian team and the Russian Federation here at three set points apiece in this gold medal match for the mixed team world championship title. I like the, the cloth that, that the Svetlana puts over her wheel to, to protect the end of the limb from the spokes as she releases, but it's got a nice design on it. She unfolded that as she set herself up on the line at the start of the match. Well, I see the agent uh, talking to Cezanne uh, Dolziev and uh, Mino. Elisabetta Mino there, the Italian archer sending out a strong message to Stefano Travisani to gym up their level with the Russians who have had to fight back Svetlana Barantseva and Beto Tsizenzorziev will shoot first in the fourth and deciding set Turn. It's a cracking start. Hey. Seven. Well, there was a big opportunity there. Uh, as we always say, when there's an opportunity, there is pressure. Mino is going to need a big score here. Eight. Well, the Russians started slowly, but they fought their way back into this, and these two arrows could put the gold medal in their hands. Eight. A 10 from Baron Saber here will do this. Yeah. 
Oh, oh she put it right down the middle of the target. And uh, nervy moments, she looked tense throughout, but that smile tells the story. Yeah, both Svetlana and Beto shot well in that match, well when they needed to as well, and that's, that's the most important thing. Seven. Yeah, the Italians shot a 31, a 35, and a 32. All they can get here is 32 points with a 10. Ten. And they do get that 10, but the Russians fought back from 3-1 down to level at 3-3 after three sets, and they were just better in the fourth. They are the world champions. Very, very promising performance from these two Russian athletes ahead of their individual bronze medal matches here in Sotogenbosch. Some communication things to sort out if they're going to shoot together again, I believe, but in terms of individual archery, more than, more than good enough to win. Yeah, a big wobble at the start from uh, Baron Saver and C. Denzorziev, but they pulled it all together in the end, and they are the 2019 Mixed Team World Champions. Well, the Russian team in the crowd will be happy with the performance of uh, their mixed team there taking a gold here in Sertgenbosch. Team medals now all sorted here on Recurve Sunday. And this is how things are finished up in the mixed team Russia. Finally back after a wobbly start to take the title from Italy, China beating Korea to the bronze medal. So as I said, all the uh, team medals have been sorted out. The women's open team gold medal went to the People's Republic of China. The USA were in fine form in the men's open team gold medal match, and they are world champions too. And we have one more medal ceremony to come, and that's for the open mixed team gold medal match, which went to Russia. So we're going to go back down onto the field of play to hand out the medals for the mixed teams here in the Netherlands. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the recurve open mixed team. Dames en heren, jongens en meisjes, hier is de medaille ceremony for the category recurve open mixed teams. Medals will be presented by World Archery First Vice President. The medallions will be presented by the first vice president of World Archery, Mario Scardella. And the 
gifts will be presented by North Brabant Province Vice Governor. En de cadeaus zullen worden overhandigd van de gedeputeerde in de provincie Noord Brabant, Henry Schwinkels. Bronze medal representing the People's Republic of China. De bronzen medaille namens de Volksrepubliek China. Uh, it's a strong performance from China in the bronze medal playoff against the Koreans. Gao Fang Chao. The 37-year-old Gao Fang Chao and the 30-year-old Wang Si Jun collect Wang the bronze si medal for China. Medals presented by uh, World Archery Vice President Mario Scarzella and uh, the waffles, the gift given out here in Sertigenbosch. Presented by uh, an official from uh, the North of Brabant province, which is uh, where we're located in this beautiful city. That's Henry Swinkles. Silver medal representing Italy. Silver medal namens Italy. Italy thought they'd done enough in the gold medal match. But it was a gutsy fight back from Russia that forced them to settle for the silver medal. Elisabetta 33 year old Mino. Elisabetta Mino and 33 year old Stefano Travisani Stefano collect the silver medal for Italy. A gutsy performance the after a rocky start in the gold medal match, medal. but they came good in the end. The gold medal goes to 41-year-old Svetlana Barantseva and the 42-year-old Bato Tidenzorziev for Russia. Confirmation of Russia have taken the gold here. And now it's time for the anthem of the Russian Federation.
Well, there we have confirmation. A gold medal going to Russia, Italy taking silver, and China taking a bronze. Chris, it's been a brilliant session on a recurve Sunday for the team events. Yes, some really impressive shooting. We've seen the same kind of patterns over and over again. People struggling in the first ends and sets in matches, but, but pulling it together and really delivering uh, at the end of the matches to win, to, to win the world champion titles. Well, thank you very much for your insight, Chris. That's it for the team session here. But coming up at 1 p.m. local time in a little over an hour will be the all-important recurve individual bronze and gold medal matches. So that's it from this session here on Recurve Sunday. Team medals all sorted. Do come back later for the individual titles.